And the whole nation listened as these guys died. Oh. It was just this horrible thing. And so we got the question all the time because we're out there preaching Jesus Christ and people are saying, why does God let this happen? And I gave a hundred awful reasons, a hundred awful answers. And I was like, well, you know, uh, you know, there has to be opposition in all things. And, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason and all this like stuff that fell on deaf ears and it never got us anywhere. And finally, one time the Holy Spirit was like, shut up. Let me take this one. And he said, essentially what Elder Renlund said, he said, I don't know why those horrible things happen, but I know that Jesus Christ's atonement is enough to fix it. This is going to be the best day ever. This is going to be the best day ever. Wake up. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I'm your host, Cardinalis, and this morning, I am joined for our morning edition by none other than Jonah Barnes, international man of mystery. Oh, am I? Again, a worldwide bon vivant ah. who actually has a very interesting thesis for us, Jonah. You said today that the LDS Church is, quote, crushing it in Cambodia. Ah. What do you mean, my man? What do you mean? Crushing it is what the youths say these days to mean... You look like you're about to like fall over in your chair. You know, like... You're... <laughs> Like, no, are you raising yourself? Like, like, there you go. Forward. That looks. Oh, you're on your laptop. I'm on, I got my little oh, laptop. Okay. Me. I was laptop. wondering. I was wondering. Like, why is he hunched over? Okay. Well, why are we crushing it in Cambodia? Well, um, so Cambodia. First of all, like, in order to appreciate Cambodia, is not a likely place for us to be crushing it. Cambodia is really a very not? well. It's a very distant and dangerous place. It was just a. Uh, a couple of decades ago, they were communist. The Khmer Rouge. Yeah, the Khmer Rouge. Yeah, that ruled was the some, place. Yeah, and it was geez. the site of lots of atrocities. And That's so, the premise of the movie The Killing Fields, if you ever had to watch that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's awful. So, it's kind of cool when you see Elder Renland cruising around in Cambodia, meeting with the Prime Minister of Cambodia, touring really? the Killing Fields. Yeah. Yeah, Renland's awesome. Wait, how did you see this? How come the church doesn't publicize this more? Uh, well... I mean, the church does what it can. It's just the media doesn't like it. The media only wants to be like, let's ask him about abuse of children. Like they don't, they don't. Like the the crap that the straw men that they inflate into something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's the only thing that they wish. You know, they're like, wait, good things are happening. Boring. And they just Yeah, seriously. So, okay. Well, do you got a picture? Do you you have a show? Yeah. I put a little link in the discord to the church's news release and it's got some cool media for it. But the gist of it is this. Elder, the, the church has been in Cambodia for 30 years now. It's the 30th anniversary of the church being there. Wow. It's, it was first recognized in 1994. Um, and so it's the 30th year the church was recognized officially by the government of Cambodia, which is kind of crazy. And since then, the church has grown and is trying to partner with Cambodia to kind of help the place out. And one of the things that Elder Renland is perfectly qualified to help them with is cardiovascular health care because oh. Renlin was a heart surgeon. He's a, he's a, yeah. a cardiovascular surgeon. We do that, man. You're an award-winning heart surgeon. We just either make you prophet or apostle. Dude. Yeah, it's, it's the route. The take. fastest way to get into the red chair is to go to medical school, apparently, you know, <laughs> <laughs> specifically heart care. Yeah. So he, uh, yeah. So he was just meeting with the prime minister of Cambodia, which is the guy over there. They're a parliamentary. Uh, ah, he looks uh, like a happy right? guy. He's like a happy guy. Yeah. You know? And Renlin meets with the guy. Renlin, super articulate guy. You listen to him talk and speak like a strong handshake, looking you right in the eye, like what a guy. And meets with this uh, Cambodian prime minister, uh, Hun Munet, or M- Manet, I don't know. Oh, okay. And uh, sits down with the dude and poses for some great pictures and proposes a new health heart center, a new cardiovascular center to be built really in, in a city south of, and I don't know if I want to even try pronouncing this thing, it's Siem Reap. Okay, well, in Cambodia, rock on. Okay, okay. South of Phnom Penh. The point is, is that the only good health care in Cambodia is in the capital. It's in Phnom Penh. Oh, uh, yeah. It's the yeah. only place where you can go to get health care. So it's kind of, and the communists built it that way, right? They're like, we're the ruling class. So we get all the public services and then all the peasants hmm. can just kind of starve and die of diseases. And so the church could have done, you know, service the population that's right there in Phnom Penh, but they said, no, we want to go outside and 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 help actually 
you know, spread some of this healthcare to the poor people and environs who Well, the who Catholics might need were it. so good at this for so long, having all of like, you know, like St. Mary's and mm-hmm. all these hospitals that are made for members of the church and everything like that. I've wondered how soon I, I know people have suspected that this has to be done in the millennium, that this has to be done as part of the fulfillment of like the book of Revelations and um all those kind of apocalyptic revelations that we have as the Church of Jesus Christ of latter day saints, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just think why wait, man? Man, we gotta usher in medical care. Housing help and UBI for members of the church, man. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> I straight up become like a practical progressive when it comes to those three things, you know? Um, I, I wish the government would do it if it didn't mean like we'd all get sent to the gulag. Yeah. And it would be at, which, yeah, we would, at, which we would. At the cost of freedom of speech and it would tank our system. But hey, if a church wanted to try it out, you know, like a private church, you yes. know, that has the capacity of bailing out corporations instead of corporations having to bail them out, you which know? has an endowment so big that the interest growth alone allows it to do these amazing global international projects like this. Yeah. Um, it was pretty cool. So Renlin went over there and he met with the members of the church. Oh, you got it right here. He's yeah. Meeting with the members of the church and talking to everybody. The guy is just an impressive guy. By the way, by the way, uh, Renlin is one of the. Yeah, but okay. I'm sorry. Renlin, I like you, brother. I like you. But tall man to tall man, you got to stand up straight. You gotta stand up straight. Oh, you know wow, what I'm dude, saying? How old is the guy? No, I get it. But even more, like, look, I learned this. I learned this when I was doing all of the uh, the, the, the fashion and modeling uh, video work in New York. Uh, the, I, I dated this beautiful tall model for a while. She was six foot two, my friend. Oh, six geez. foot two. Yeah, she was a model in Milan. She was there in Fashion Week. She uh, ended up moving to New York. Super cool girl. Right. Anyway, she said the number one thing she learned in ballet because she was a tall girl in ballet. And that's actually where she learned a lot of her poise, her balance, her song, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. forth. She said her ballet teacher said, you are tall. She points straight at her with a bony old French woman finger. Right. And I don't know if she had if she was French, but that sounds really good. <laughs> like a ballet French instructor. Right. And she said, tall women only appear lanky when they stoop and want to look short. So stand up tall and stand up proud. I don't care if you're a head taller than everybody else. Wow. You know, and so I always say that to us tall men. You know, there's a lot of guys, oh. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Slavic in origin and hmm. heritage as well as American on my mother's side. Uh, and it looks like Renlin here. You know what I'm saying? He's he's a he's a big guy. I saw him uh, kind of towering over a lot of these cats when we were uh cruising through the rest of the video you know he's he's not a small yeah, glass he's a of water big, he's a big but look dude. we got it we got to get him to stand up man your bodyguard can't be standing taller than you renlin you're a warrior priest my friend yeah no he's a lit- warrior priest <laughs> he literally yeah. is so his <laughs> he, he's actually uh i don't know if people know this he's swedish really so we have like five members of the quorum of the 12 apostles who are foreign at this point that's almost that's almost half wait he's you know from sweden so he was born i think born in america and then moved to Sweden where he was raised by his family there. And his first language was Swedish. Really? Yeah. English is his second language. He's well, legit Swedish. Cool. And that's he's 71 cool. years old. Look, dude, if I look yeah. that good when I'm 71 years old, I'm going to be feeling great about myself. Yeah. I tell my my boys, my boys play guitar and they they haunch over. Uh-huh. And I tell them like, the easiest thing you can do to look better is to stand up Boom. straight. I think Renlin looks great. Renlin, like don't listen to this guy. We jam- I think it looks great, too. I think it looks great, too. I'm just saying, if you know his handlers did a good enough job to tell him that like you got to go like that to say thank yeah, you and there's sure. other things you got to do, I think one of them should walk by and just say, like, hey, stand up straight, brother. Stand up straight. You he's, know? Not trying to, he's not trying to spook everybody with his height. He's in a country with some... Loud and proud. All do right, it loud and right. proud. Tall men only look lanky. When they, when they, you know, when they don't have good posture. Yeah. So anyway, keep going. Well, so it was pretty cool. So he goes over there to Cambodia and uh, actually toured the killing fields. Oh my gosh, that must fields. have been heart wrenching. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, tours the killing fields. And he says something very, I mean, this is a place that's been through a lot. And he says something really interesting. He says there, are, he's given the speech. There are some who say, this is Elder Renland. Uh-huh. There are some that say, if there was a God... Wouldn't he have done something about this? These are the killing fields. These are the yeah. pits yeah. where they, they killed all these people. Wouldn't God have done something about this? Oh, and geez. Elder Redland responds and says, the answer is he has. He restored his gospel and the sealing authority so that one can do something oh. for these victims as one chooses. That's part of making this right. And that's the real answer. It's not like, well, justice, sir. You have to learn from like, don't. It's that 
No matter how bad things get, Jesus Christ can fix it. And so he's taking that message to Cambodia, and I think it's awesome. And that is no disrespect to anybody who has had, suffered immediate consequences. Of yeah, like I got to tell you, this is where this is where some Mormon euphemisms fall on my deaf ears. I lived in a children's hospital. Oh my gosh, dude. The lessons you learn there, I have seen. Like when people say, okay, so I believe what Redland said that 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 through Christ all healing comes, right? But anybody well, like we we repeat in our wealth in Western America so many silly stupid chicken noodle soup for the soul like phrases that aren't rooted in doctrinal reality and one of them that bothers me the most and my dad agrees with me on this and i don't know, call me an apostate if you want but i hate it when people are like oh well you can't be given a trial that you can't bear and i'm like bs <laughs> bs dude i have seen parents break yeah. just break under the pressure of watching their children die you know, and, and it's just like that. Oh, my gosh. Like, I, I believe imagine. Christ can heal it, you know, but you got to be really careful yeah. with you. Like, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Whoa, like, oh, whoa, my gosh. Whoa, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. so so I like Renlin's answer where he said the Lord yeah. already did. Yes. But you have to make sure that you are very, very vocal about the fact that this the healing is possible. You know what I'm saying? But that does not neither justify nor like or downplay or downplay yeah. or like, like, like righteousness is no insurance policy against crappy things happening to no, you. And the yes. most crappy of things yeah. happens to good, good people. Yes. So, so when, when I was yeah. over and ser- speaking of communist countries, I served in the former Soviet union and there was the Kursk submarine disaster where all wow. these young, healthy Russian sailors and Russian sailors, that's like, that is just the most proud thing in the world. Your son's a sailor. To a Russian, really? that is, oh, that's the best thing ever. Okay. And all of these young men sank in this submarine and they couldn't get back up to the surface. And so they slowly suffocated, but they could communicate with the surface. So on the news stations, they were playing the voices of these guys Please help us as they all slowly suffocated to death. And it was the most horrible thing in the world. And the whole nation listened as these guys died. Oh. It was this horrible thing. And so we got the question all the time because we're out there preaching Jesus Christ. And people are saying, why does God let this happen? And I gave a hundred awful reasons, a hundred awful answers. And I was like, well, you know, uh, you know, there has to be opposition in all things. And, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason and all this like stuff that fell on deaf ears and it never got us anywhere and finally one time the holy spirit was like shut up let me take this one and he said essentially what elder renland said he said i don't know why those horrible things happen but i know that jesus christ's atonement is enough to fix it is and that what that, he said and that was finally finally the answer wait that's what you said or that's what renland that's said? that's what i said years oh, ago on okay. mission and renland said almost something exactly the same he said uh that people were while he's touring the killing fields, this guy is asking him. Uh, touring the Chi Yong Ek, the killing fields, says, "Does the atonement of Jesus Christ even cover this? Can it cover even this?" And he says, "Yes, it is an infinite atonement. Everything that is unfair about life can and will be made right." So, any parents who've lost a child in a children's hospital, that is not something I'm ever going to try to understand. I'm never going to be like, "Yes, let me give you some advice on how to gr-. like." Whoa, no, no. But I know that Jesus Christ knows. He understands. He and he can make it right. I can't I can't justify it or understand it. It's way beyond me, that type of grief. But I know that it isn't beyond Jesus Christ. And that's the lesson that Elder Renland brought. He goes all over the world. These guys go all over the world pointing people towards the Savior. That's all they do. They point people towards the Savior. So it's an awesome story. And and he didn't just preach. He also uh, was announcing the $2.2 million new cardiovascular center so that there can be fewer people watching their Rock children die. On. And uh, You know, awesome. I, I confess, bro, that was be- I felt the spirit when you were talking about how the spirit told you to boom. Just say, what do they say again? They would say, how can God let this Yeah, happen? what was your answer again? And I'd say, I don't know, but I know that Jesus Christ can fix it. Dude. 
Yeah. That is awesome. That's the only answer. I love it. I love it. I I, I confess, I went into this kind of thinking we were going to joke around for five minutes, talking about how the LDS church was crushing at oh, we Cambodia. We would never joke And we were going to have some kind of, you know, around. video of like a heart center that they built. And I was like, hey, that's good. You know, it's like they build wells, they build heart centers. I didn't know we were getting a treatise on the uh, origin oh, of evil well. from, you know, our giant, like, six foot whatever he is. Uh, fellow Swede, because you are of Swedish I am. Ancestry. That's true. That's true. You know what I'm saying? That's, I'm, a and, fellow, I'm a fellow um, Swede. Well, now- that By the way, you're look, are you going to be that bald? Is, like, is that going to no be like- No, sir. You, no, know. I'm going- I'm like- boom, I'm going gray before boom. everybody in the world. I'm like so young. And well, I'm you have to gray. hope you go bald, because when you go bald, the sooner you go bald, the sooner you become an apostle. <laughs> and you don't- <laughs> we, we don't want to outpace Brad Whitbeck, right, No, I'm bro? never losing my hair. But now that we've said the spiritual things, Cardin- Yes. Now we're going to joke around because oh, in the oh, Discord, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> in I was the, literally about to say for this and more. Go to wordradio.com, no. but apparently we're not. All oh, right, no, we've got going. a couple of things here. So okay, if you scroll okay. in the Discord, first of all, let's let's uh, let's ramp up to it. We have a picture of a bunch of missionaries. Okay, this is the celebration of 100 years of Christianity in Cambodia. Now the only really? reason I say this is so that our friend Mike Winger and our friend Jeff Durbin, who is watching this, the Burger King himself. Uh, <laughs> Can just see that we joined in that celebration of Christianity being in Cambodia. Uh, 100 years. We were right there, wow. elbow to elbow with the other Christians. I know that they love that. The other thing is, is that the church has been so successful that we're actually building a temple. And there's a picture of the temple going up. That's cool. Look in Cambodia. That. These are the exterior panels being put on. This thing's almost done. It's really? almost done. Building temples in that part of the world is not an easy thing. All really? the permits and the construction, and we're almost finished. Very cool. Wow. And then the last on. thing, of course, and this probably should have been the first thing up there. We have a little map to help Pastor Jeff Durbin orient himself. We're talking about Cambodia. Now, if you look at this map right here, uh -huh. the little green dot are the people who God is going to save. <laughs> Okay. The, the people not under Calvinist condemnation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The okay, people yeah. who aren't damned to an eternal hell with no judgment or anything or no. On I'm, their having, part. I'm just, having trouble seeing on the map. Where are the people it's, not it's, damned? Well, it's the little green. If you see right there in Mesa, Arizona, where the Apologia ah, Church is. I see yes. it. I see it. Yes. Those are the, the good news that the angels brought that night that Christ was born is that there's going to be a couple hundred people someday in, in Mesa who are going to be saved. Everybody else is hopelessly damned. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the great news that the Burger King they bring. Fiefdom is very small. Yes, yes. It's just 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 one chapel. <laughs> they're the saved. Of, okay, yes, they're saved. They're saved. And then if you look at the other arrow, that over there are the millions and millions of people in Cambodia. So okay. now 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 Pastor Jeff can kind of get oriented in the world there. Um, but we know that with that temple going up and with the keys that Elder Renlin has, that even all those children in Cambodia who were killed or who died for thousands and thousands of years all have a chance at salvation because Jesus Christ restored his gospel and doesn't just blithely damn 99% of the human race because they don't attend Apologia Studios and read the King James Version of the Bible. Um, so... No, All those wow. people have a chance of salvation. That is the good news coming from Cambodia where we're crushing it. Dude, so I was about to say, we defended our thesis. The scientific method was fulfilled on Ward Radio. We presented a theory. We established an experiment. Ooh. We repeated the experiment. Wow. And then we analyzed the results. And now we submit it to your peer review as... Our audience, let us know. Hey, did you like that, bro? I just <laughs> That's good. That's good. That was pretty good, good you know? <laughs> yeah, so now, in the comments below, if you're listening to us on the radio, please check us out on KHTS AM 1220 or uh, on hometownstation.com and opine if this is one of the videos that ends up going out on our Sunday special. I mean, one of the... Uh, audio segments that goes uh -huh. out on our Sunday special. Also, uh, if you guys are on YouTube, on pod, on po Podcastify, I meant to say on Spotify Podcastify. or Ooh. Apple Podcasts, please make sure you comment below as well. Let us know what you think. Is the church crushing it in Cambodia? Because I think it is. Anyway, this was real and it was fun and it was real fun for this and more. Please check us out at wardradio.com This is gonna be the best day ever this is gonna be the best day ever wake up top of the morning the bacon is crispy the is pouring my meds
meditation is peeling an orange The bank says I'm already scoring I got a parking spot right outside Step into my brand new ride All we ever get is green lights And blue skies This is gonna be the best